it's a really a great, a great privilege and an honor um, to introduce our first speaker, uh, the Ambassador of the Republic of Poland to the United States, Piotr Wilczek. Mr. Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear members of the Council of National Directors, dear friends, it is my honor to be here with you this evening as you gather in Washington, D.C. for your annual meeting. During the course of my year in Washington, D.C., I have had the pleasure to meet different members and directors of the Polish-American Congress from across the United States. I have always very much appreciated the opportunity to meet with all members of Polonia, but especially with members of the Polish-American Congress who express great interest and involvement in Polish-American issues. I do not have to tell you how important a strong, united and involved Polonia is. That has been the guiding mission of the Polish-American Congress ever since its establishment 73 years ago. However, over the past three quarters of a century, much has changed. Policies have been redefined, the global landscapes modified, and even Polonia has evolved. However, some things have stayed the same. Our common love for our homeland, our unwavering belief in Western values, including freedom and democracy, and our conviction that strength lies in unity. There will be more moving passages so many. <laughs> we meet today at a very dynamic and interesting time in history, equally in terms of Poland's history and the history of Polish-American relations. Over the past few months, Polish-US relations have undergone an intense period of cooperation and heightened contacts. President Donald Trump's July the 6th visit to Warsaw was an effort was an affirmation of our strong bilateral relations. In his remarks before the imposing statue dedicated to the Warsaw Uprising, President Trump acknowledged Poland's centuries-long struggle for freedom, independence, sovereignty, values which together with the United States we continue to cultivate and defend. Even just last week, at the United Nations, President Trump once again referred to Poland and Poles in his speech as an example of patriotism. <laughs> President Trump's decision to visit Poland as his first bilateral visit in Europe this summer was a testament also to the efforts of Polonia. It is thanks to your involvement in the American political process and especially your outreach to American politicians that helps us accomplish so much for the benefit of Polish-American relations. <laughs> Thank you, but it'll make the speech much longer. So, <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> but it's, I know it's for President Trump, not for myself. But uh, <laughs> just as an example, I will share with you all the first words President Trump shared with me when I met him for the first time in the Oval Office back in February. When I introduced myself as the ambassador of Poland, President Trump immediately replied, did you know that 78% of Polish Americans voted for me? Today, Poland is a strong, proud, and engaged member of NATO. Yeah. Our contributions to, for, to allied solidarity means that we meet the NATO benchmark of 2% GDP on defense spending, and our armed forces are deployed abroad serving in NATO missions in Kosovo, Afghanistan, the Baltics, Romania and elsewhere. Poland knows the price for freedom and understands that solidarity is our strength. In addition to being a force provider, Poland also hosts numerous US and NATO groups in our country as well. The, this, this reality is of course a result of a resurgent Russia 
which continues to violate the territorial sovereignty of our neighbors. Thanks to the serious commitment from Warsaw to the defense of our country, as well as the realization in Washington and elsewhere that NATO's eastern flank must be strengthened, Poland today can feel safe knowing that our NATO and American allies are serving shoulder to shoulder with our Polish forces in the defense of our common good. Without NATO, transatlantic cooperation would be weaker, Europe and North America are less safe, and the world a more dangerous place. Poland continues to advocate strongly in support of sanctions against Russia. For almost 10 years in Georgia and for the third year in Ukraine, we have been witnessing the obvious violation of fundamental principles of the UN Charter, including the principle of inviolability of borders, respect of sovereignty, renouncing the use of military force in resolution of disputes. As President Andrzej Duda declared last week before the United Nations, absolute respect of international law lays down the foundation for a stable, foreseeable and peaceful setting of relations amongst, amongst states and through it the assurance of sustainable growth. Poland also wishes to contribute to the building of international order founded on the principles of political sovereignty and territorial integrity. This will be the guiding philosophy of Poland's membership in the United Nations Security Council, which it assumes in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, the past few months have been a true flurry of high-level connections between Poland and the United States. Foreign Minister Waszczykowski recently met with Secretary Tillerson at the Community of Democracies Summit in Washington, D.C. Poland was a co-founder co of this organization back in 2000, together with the United States. During this summit, Secretary Tillerson quoted President Trump's speech from Warsaw and said, we value the dignity of every human life. This is who we are. Minister Waszczykowski invited Secretary Tillerson to Poland, and we hope this visit will take place in the coming months. He didn't come with Donald Trump. <laughs> also last week, Defense Minister Antoni Macierewicz met with Secretary Mattis at the Pentagon to discuss US-Poland defense cooperation. Secretary Mattis recalled the contribution of Pulaski and Kościuszko to America's revolution, as well as Poland's heroism during World War II. Allow me to quote Secretary Mattis directly. Flying British Spitfires out of England and jumping paratroopers into Arnhem, you fought all the way through the war. Poland never gave up. Today, you are a valued member of NATO and Poland leads by example. These visits speak for themselves and illustrate the wonderful state of our current relations. Poles believe in American power in the world and a strong Polish-American alliance, but we are also true believers in the European Union. However, the EU must undergo modifications in order to maintain relevance and legitimacy in the eyes of Europeans. An integrated EU means more power in relations with the outside world, but at the same time, we should be very careful about this balance between more European integration and national sovereignty. In many European countries, not only in Poland, there is a strong feeling of national identity and sovereignty. For that reason, the EU should preserve this balance and as an organization not interfere too deeply in domestic issues which some countries think should belong to national parliaments. One of the biggest challenges for the European Union is to preserve unity based on mutual understanding and avoid this feeling that bigger countries impose their will on smaller countries. There are also important changes taking place in Poland itself, as you know. For the last two years, the law and justice government has been undertaking important initiatives to reform our country. Some of those reforms, like the reforms of the judicial system in Poland, refer to spheres of public life that haven't been reformed since the fall of communism and are much needed. All undertaken and intended reforms are meant to improve the functioning of the public institutions for the benefit of Polish citizens. We also want to put more emphasis on historical education. Our intention is to show the true history of Poland and the Polish people. 
We want to bring back to life Polish heroes who are sometimes forgotten, very often forgotten, were forgotten. The, the law and justice government is especially devoted to showing the accurate history of the Second World War. Our aim is to get rid of such infamous phrases like Polish concentration camps. It is one of the priorities of the Polish diplomatic services, also here in the United States, to react to every case of inaccurate or unjust description of Nazi German concentration at and extermination camps. We truly appreciate the engagement of Polonia around the world in this mission. I would like to take a moment now to address matters pertaining to Polonia. I know the group present here today represents different generations and emigration waves. The Polish community and Poles living abroad occupied a special place in Polish foreign policy. They are members of our Polish family, a part of Poland in the most distant corners of the world. That is why we cherish our relationship with the Polish community and Poles abroad more than any other relationship. Support for teaching Polish language and culture will continue to be a priority. Poland especially will place special emphasis on historical education of the young generation. When it comes to education, there is hardly a more important institution in Polonia than the St. Cyril and Methodius Seminary at Orchard Lake, Father Krul. Established in 1885, the seminary at Orchard Lake, Michigan has pre prepared th hundreds of candidates for the Roman Catholic priesthood primarily to serve Polish American immigrant communities. Priests educated at Orchard Lake have contributed over the years to Polish American communities throughout the United States, cultivating Polish language, customs, traditions, and faith. Today, the long-standing Polish seminary at Orchard Lake is beginning a new chapter. Father Mirosław Król, whom I met yesterday for a long three hours discussion, uh, very long, three hours, more than three hours. <laughs> a lot of wine. <laughs> has been appointed the 12th Chancellor of the Orchard Lake Schools. He has a bold and energetic plan to revitalize this incredibly important Polonia institution. I believe that the seminary at Orchard Lake is essential, and with Father Krul at its head, it fu its future looks bright. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, partnership is the foundation of our relations with the Polish community abroad. Fresh initiatives and a new look at the possibilities created by cooperation and dialogue are needed on both sides. In this regard, we specifically count on your active involvement in creating a positive image of Poland in the world. As President Duda said last week in Warlington, New Jersey, during his meeting with, with Polish Americans, Poland is ready to support and cooperate with Polonia on various initiatives, projects, ideas. You are important for Poland, and I look forward to working with you, and I hope you will return to your chapters and other Polish-American organizations. Um, when you return to your chapters and other your, your other organizations you are involved with, and share the news that our embassy is open to you and ready to work hand in hand. I would like to especially note the involvement of the Polish-American Congress in cultivating Polish traditions and customs in America, as well as propagating Polish culture and history among Americans. President Duda and other Polish dignitaries have visited the Camp Kościuszko Cemetery in Canada, which is cared for jointly by the Polish-American Congress and Polish-Canadian Congress. Such initiatives are very important to the collective memory of Poles and Polish-Americans, especially this year as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the Polish Blue Army in France. <laughs> this army, which contained over 24,000 Polish volunteers from America, 
including perhaps some of your ancestors, was a living testament to Poland's desire for independence. The memory of the Haller's army will continue to be cherished and celebrated in Poland as we prepare to commemorate Poland's 100th anniversary of rebirth. 2017 also marks the year of Tadeusz Kościuszko. Our hero, who needs no introduction in this crowd, died exactly 200 years ago this October. To celebrate, our embassy has been organizing a series of events, including at the Library of Congress, and coming up we will be having a Kościuszko Freedom Run, as well as a celebration by the Kościuszko Monument in Lafayette Park by the White House on October 15th. Save the date. On exactly the 200th anniversary of Kościuszko's passing, since the stunning memorial to Kościuszko was funded by the Polonia and spearheaded by the Polish National Alliance, I would very much like to invite all of you to be with us that day as we honor the legacy of our hero of two nations. October 15th in the afternoon. Also, it is believed that Kościuszko has more namesakes across the United States than any other Revolutionary War figure other than George Washington. On this note, I would also like to invite you to organize Kościuszko events in your states so that Kościuszko's legacy will once again be remembered by Americans from sea to sea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know tomorrow you will be heading to Capitol Hill to engage with your elected representatives. I am confident you will have a productive day with many constructive conversations. I wish you lots of energy, as you will certainly need it, maneuvering the Hall of Congress. I know, I do it every week. <laughs> Thank you once again for inviting me, for being our stalwart partner, and for your continued enthusiasm and partnership. I look forward to many future visits and opportunities to collaborate. Thank you very much.